Um, hi, thanks everybody for, for coming. Uh, my name is Craig Topham and I am a copyright and licensing associate for the Free Software Foundation. And I'm a part of the FSF's uh, licensing and compliance lab. Uh, before we get into the things that the lab does, I'd like to appreciate and thank the, um, for coming and using your time to hopefully I'll make it worth your while. And I'd also like to thank the Conservancy for hosting the Fosse event. Uh, I think these things are really important. It's nice to get together with like-minded people and then know that when we leave, most of you are going out to continue to do the work that you're, you're here to represent, which is, which is really comforting to know that people out there doing, doing the work. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is about the GNU General Public License. And before I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what the lab does. Um, the Licensing and Compliance Lab at the Free Software Foundation has a host of activities, uh, various programs that we work on. Um, one of them is the, we call the Respect Your Freedom Certification Program, where we find devices that run fully on fully free software with no proprietary blobs or anything in there. Um, we also have a, um, a program where we endorse uh, specific operating systems that are, are fully free. Um, we also host the Free Software Directory, which is a collection of, I think we're nearing 17,000 uh, free software programs that have been more or less uh, examined and proven to be free software. And that's, that's a nice resource for the, the, the world to have. Uh, we also do outreach. We write articles and, you know, regular stuff like that. Um, and one of the other important things that we do is we answer licensing questions from the general public. Um, myself, um, the compliance and licensing manager, and a four, four licensing volunteers that are very knowledgeable, and we just, people with their free software questions, they write in and ask us how the GPL works, and we're able to help them. We certainly don't give legal advice, but we try to get them to get them past the, whatever's blocking their, their project. And then the last thing, that, not the last thing, but the, one of the more important things that we do is we're the stewards of the GNU General Public License. And that's a little bit of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, we do a couple things for the GPL. One of them is to protect, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we're sponsors of the GNU project. And most of the GNU project is licensed under the GPL. And when somebody is distributing part of the GNU project and aren't complying with what the requirements of the GPL say, we reach out to them. Um, as copyright holders of most of the software in the GNU project, um, we're, we're in a good position to enforce the GPL in those matters. Uh, the other thing that we do with the GPL is stewardship. So, of course, there's no current plans of drafting a new version, but if there were, that would be something we would be working on. Um, in the meantime, and this is what my talk is about today, is when the GPL is being misrepresented, and this happens when somebody uh, tacks on additional, um, not requirements, but additional uh, restrictions to, to the GPL, which kind of contradict the grants, the rights granted in the GPL. And to be nice, uh, when we see this happening, we, we just simply call it confusing licensing versus other names we can come up with. Um, and we chose that because that's what it is. The GPL says you can use this for any purpose, but then all of a sudden there's a, an extra requirement or restriction that says you can't use it for commercial purposes. And from a user's point of view, that's, we consider that confusing. Um, overall, I don't, I don't consider this a very complicated subject, uh, but it certainly is something worth telling people because the rights granted in the GPL, if they are being restricted, it's a threat to free software in general and also kind of a, puts a damper on the, the GPL and, and people's trust when they see the GPL, they know what rights they're going to get and they shouldn't have to go searching for you know, things that aren't granted in the GPL. Um, so why, why do projects do this? And this is something we've taken notice of and we've realized that it, it happens quite a bit. And we can't really speak to why projects do this, so let's speculate a little bit. Let's just guess. Um, and this is not in my opinion. This isn't the opinion of the FSF because this is complete speculation. 
Uh, the first thing that why people would do this is it's a mistake. They don't understand how the GPL works. Maybe they saw another project do this, and they go, oh, that's fine. I'm just going to put this commons clause on the bottom of the GPL, and everything should be fine. And I'll talk a little bit about the commons clause later. But it's, it's a, basically, it, it restricts commercial use of, of, a, of, a, of the software that you've received. And there's also uh, the idea that they, they actually may mean well. Like they may tack on, you can't use this for military purposes. You can't use this to, you know, ex, you know uh, blackmail somebody or something along those lines. Uh, maybe they sat in gum someday and said, I don't want juicy fruit involved with my project at all. Um, it's just people come up with some pretty arbitrary stuff. And that's as if they're the copyright holder of their program, they're free to do that, uh, but they can't tack it onto the, the GPL. Uh, the other end of the spectrum is they're doing it on purpose uh, in the sense that they enjoy saying that their product is under the AGPL v3. And we love open source, or I would say free software. And they, they like that. It, it, if you go to a page that, that is quote unquote open source, it's, it's up front. They, they love saying it, but then you drill down a little bit and go, wait a minute, this says I can't, I can't, you know, there's limitations here. And that's not what the, the GPL is all about, obviously. And um, it, it's quite possible that they do this without thinking maybe their users or those downstream won't take the time to look into what's going on. They'll just see the AGPL and go, great, I love that. I'm going to use that. And so that's one reason. Also to get more cynical about it is the, the GPL has been kind of central to the free software movement for well over three decades now. And people, they, they know what it is. It's not some mystery license that they're baffled about. They, they know what it stands for. And so if they do tack on something like the Commons Clause, as I mentioned before, it restricts some commercial use. And like a commons clause sounds, sounds kind of for the public good. You know, maybe, maybe it's related to freedom. And, um, and a lot of folks won't bother to drill down and go, well, what is it actually saying? Oh, it says I can't do this. But the GPL says I can. That's, and, and then thus, thus the confusion, aforem aforementioned confusion. And... Oh, the other thing is with the, so if you look at the GPL and you read the preamble, which is not written in legalese, it's, it's some pretty plain English stuff, it's very clear what the purpose of this document is. It really is meant to go to guarantee freedom and, and uh, make sure those that receive it also get the same freedoms. So yeah, so that's, you know, and it really doesn't matter why they're doing it. It's just we want them to stop. It's, and so we, the, the fun of speculating is one thing, but it really, it really doesn't matter. Just we want people to please stop and respect the GPL. So how do we go about finding these additional restrictions? Uh, oftentimes, um, people will just actually edit a copy of the GPL and just add their own sections in there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about why that's a, that's a problem. But it's also a good opportunity for anybody who comes across a program with a GPL to uh, run a diff or a W diff against it to make sure it's an exact copy. And the, the Free Software Foundation does distribute, distribute canonical copies of the GPL that you can, you can do this with. Um, a lot of the times that uh, people will slip something into the README file so there's the, the GPL completely unedited. People understand what it's for, but then you get into the README file and it, it says, oh, this is under the GPL, but also no commercial use. Uh, you can't use it to support communism, whatever they will come up with. Um, they can also slip in these notices in file headers. And that's a little more tricky to difficult, a little more difficult to detect, uh, but there are tools out there like scan code toolkit and Fossology that might help find errant file headers um, to make sure that they're not, they're not slipping in some additional, additional restrictions. Um, a lot of times they will add licenses alongside the GPL. And this is actually a pretty common thing for big projects. They'll have a single file with all the licenses there into their, their code base. And 
that's fine. It, it's common, but if if you want to know, you got to look at each one of those licenses and make sure they're compatible with the GPL. And the Free Software Foundation does does uh, publish a list of of uh, licenses, whether they're compatible with the GPL, whether they're free or not. And so there are resources out there if you if you wanted to to check that to make sure that what you're dealing with is fully free software. Um, I once saw an additional restriction that was buried in the user manual. That would be a little harder because I don't necessarily read an entire manual before I start using a program. Um, it, was some, it was some onerous restriction about how the, the trademark can be used effectively rendering it non-free. And so it's just, I don't have an easy solution for that one. It's just something to be, to be aware of. Uh, long story short, it's, it's up to you to be vigilant. Um, if you're really going to get involved, that's the time to seek out your own legal counsel. Uh, because if, if there is an additional restriction, you find an additional requirement or restriction on something, um, it might be legitimate. Uh, because, and we're going to talk about here in a second, is the, so the, there's a section seven of the, the GNU General Public License has a list of additional requirements that the licensor can apply to the GPL. Uh, this, was, this was originally done for software compatibility, or not, yeah, one of the reasons it was done for software compatibility. And um, it, more importantly, the, the section seven has a portion where it says if, if there's anything else that's not included in this list of allowed additional requirements, you can consider it additional restriction, and you are, as a recipient of the, the license, allowed to remove it, which is a pretty powerful thing. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, I'm going to choose my words carefully. If you're, if you're going to use it, yeah, I, I don't, this is, I'll set this to a side, but if you're going to use it for personal use, you're, you're going to be fine. But if you're seriously like looking to start a business or something along the, those lines, that's where you really want to talk to legal counsel and make sure. Uh, the license certainly allows you to do it, uh, but yeah, you want to make sure you've covered your bases and you're not going to do something that'll get a large company barreling down upon you, even though you're well within your rights to do that. So yeah, so uh, before we, so when you come across an additional restriction, and we're going to talk about what you can do about it. Um, And this is, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something seemed out of order there, but it's not. Panic there for a second. Um, so let's say you, you find an additional restriction and you're going to, you wanna, you wanna remove it or you, know, you wanna use the thing, but you wanna make sure that you're not dealing with the confusing license or doing something that might you know, give you a headache. Um, is to, to try to solve your problem yourself, solve the problem yourself. And so um, we, we have been approaching this, and we'll get into how the F, what the FSF is doing with this subject matter in a moment. Um, but we, so the, uh, I mentioned earlier we do the, the compliance with the GNU General Public License and the GNU Project. And one of, we have the um, principles of community-oriented community GPL enforcement. It's the same thing that Conservancy follows. I don't think they're verbatim, but uh, they're definitely the, the same spirit is there. As we, we found, not me personally, but the FSF has found that discretion yields better results. So, for example, let's say you found some contradictory license, and the, the easiest thing to do is just reach out to the project. But you might want to reach out to them directly, uh, don't necessarily file a bug or an issue saying, hey, you're doing something wrong, you know, because that brings attention to it, and that might not that might generate some resistance. Um, so we have found that discretion is, is a better approach. Um, but yeah, one way is doing it is just reaching out to the, to the project going, hey, you're, you're, you've added this additional restriction. It kind of contradicts the rights granted into the, the GPL. And that, you, and that you can even explain that you understand that section seven allows me to remove that, right? Um, and the conversation can go from, can go from there. 
Um, sometimes they'll just say, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that, or yes, I understand that Section 7 allows you to remove that, so go ahead. Um, but if there, if there is some resistance and it's more than you're willing to deal with, that's when you can let us know, let the Free Software Foundation know. Um, the email address to do that is licensing at fsf.org. Um, it's just the word licensing at fsf.org. And just explain what you've run into, and then we will, we will take a closer look at that. And the reason why we're interested in that is, as I mentioned before, we want people to respect the GPL. We don't want people to malign it. And um, if they're adding an additional restriction and it's insisting that they don't have to remove it or you can't remove it, then that's, we wanna, we're going to take a closer look at that. And um, we have been. Uh, we've had a couple examples where we found People doing just what I had explained earlier, and um, we reached out to them, and so far so good. As far as cooperation goes, though, we haven't reached any resistance, and our our foundation for this is the the fact that the Free Software Foundation holds the copyright of the GNU General Public License, obviously, but we also hold trademarks on GNU, the FSF, and Free Software Foundation. Um, and as a, as a quick aside, we actually, the Free Software Foundation is open to folks using the language in our licenses. Um, as long as you remove the preamble, um, there's instructions on how to apply the license to your project at the end. We want, would like that removed. Um, and then any mention of GNU or FSF, which if you look within the license, there are a couple examples of that. And then also to call it something else. Um, you don't call it the AGP, AGPL with the Commons Clause. You just take the name off entirely. And, and we're, the FSF is fine with that. Um, it's actually a fairly common, I understand that it's a fairly common thing for people to borrow languages from various license, licenses. And um, yeah, and we actually have instructions to do that on the, if you go to, uh, oh, I don't remember the URL. And this is why I regret not having slides. But we have, a, uh, the G we have an FAQ for the GPL, and within that is a, what I just said, just, you know, take the name off of it, take the preamble, et cetera. And as long as you do that, we're fine. Um, we refer that you, prefer that you didn't. Uh, the world really doesn't need another free software licenses, another license. We have plenty. I heard there's a really good one. It's called the GNU General Public License. Just use that. It's, it's fine. Yeah, so getting back to the, the rights that the FSF has under copyright and trademark laws is that we are using them to prevent unauthorized derivatives of our work and confusing users with the FSF's trademarks attached to it. And we, we just think that's a problem. Um, each infri infringement we come across is, is probably unique and may oftentimes require legal counsel uh, for us. And yes, as I mentioned before, we've done this a couple of times, and it's so far so good, and we, um, the more we look, the more easier we find them, and we're just trying to tackle them one at a time the same way we do with the, the regular GPL enforcement. Um, and then if we interact with these people, these various projects, and it was their intention to always be proprietary. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do about that outside of asking them, please free your software. Um, but typically, if they're, if they're, you know, they're set on making it proprietary and they thought they could do that by taking the GPL and adding an additional restriction, um, yeah, there's just not much we can do about it, but just we won't let them use the GPL in, in this way. So that's, um, that's kind of the gist of it. I did realize halfway through the day that some of the examples that I had given about detecting licenses, like for example, if somebody had the GPL and then they put an additional restriction into the readme file, that's not something, that's not attached to the GPL 
um, file. Um, so it doesn't count as far as the, the trademark and copyright um, uh, resolutions. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, the only things that we can really act on is where they've actually taken a copy of the GPL and a, like on the same file have put additional data and saying that it's still the AGPL or GPL, either one. Um, so yeah, so we covered the, speculated about the motivations, why people would do this. We talked about ways to, to detect them and determine that they're out there. Um, had some suggestions about what you can do as a community member. Um, and this is really important because a active and observing community is a strong community. I can only encourage everybody to do that. And Right, and then also is if people are out there trying and then when they finally come to us, there's, there's like some steps have already been taken. Yes, we've reached out to them. They, here's an email saying they refuse to remove this additional restriction um, or allow you to remove it. And so that, that helps us with how to treat them moving forward. And, um, and then we talked about what the FSF is actively doing. And um, yeah, and so the, the goal of this talk was really to spread awareness about this. This is nothing new. Uh, this was uh, used in a fireside chat at Fosdom earlier this year. We've had an article out about it. Um, so I'm just trying to... Hmm. I was going to say... Yeah, that, hmm. Just keep re repeating it. <laughs> there, were, there was a phrase that I, I'm not sure if it was politically correct or not. Um, Yeah, and just remember if you have any questions or you find something, licensing at fsf.org. And um, yeah, I'll leave it open to, to questions. Yeah. Heidi? That's a good question. <laughs> well, so whether it's legally binding or not, something like that is clearly a restriction because if I want to do something evil, evil with GPL software, that's, that's, what, that's what freedom looks like. I'm sorry, you know. Um, and, and what's interesting about that, and this is pretty common with, with people doing things like that, is like they'll say there's a license that say, um, no, you can't use this to uh, blackmail somebody, right? There's laws that keep you from blackmailing people. Like, it, it won't be the license that'll get you in trouble. It'll be the actual laws run by the government. Um, so, and that's a, we see a lot of licenses like that. Uh, for example, there's one, um, not to get too far off, but there's a license called 996, which I believe it, it, it target is, targets, um, the Chinese, yeah, nine, work nine, nine in the morning to nine at night, six days a week. Um, now, that actually doesn't apply to what I was saying about the whole law thing, but it's not. The, the thing that I keep hearing, and I'm not a lawyer, um, and this, none of this is legal advice, is that if you want to handle something like that, it's, the license is not where to do it. There's other, other um, activist activities that you can participate in or be involved with to deter that activity but the, an actual legal license is not the, the way to, to go about it. Oh, there's gotta be, gotta be something. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, sorry, Luke, go ahead. No, I, I... Um, so I Well, that, 
I intentionally <laughs> avoided bringing that up. Um, there's other, there's somebody in the room that probably knows a lot more about it than I do. And um, in, in that particular case, my understanding is that the, at least for the, the final judgment, that it wasn't applicable to, uh, if you, you can read the final judgment and it, 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 it doesn't, Denver, could I, if I called you out, would you? <laughs> Well, we, we will still contend that you, you can remove it, um, but there was other aspects of that court case that um, were unrelated to that particular action. Oh, oh I didn't see over there, Karen. <laughs> there's, there's two people in the room that know definitely a lot more about it than I do. Oh. Is there, I, any other comments? <laughs> All right. No, we, we could we could talk about it, but yeah, that's the, it's a very in depth thing. It was it was I I took it out because it would have been too involved. Um, but yeah, that is that is something we can discuss. Uh, Jim, oh sorry, Devin again. Yeah, it, it was an unfortunate, <clears throat> but fortunately, as I understand, it didn't set any precedents. Um, so it's still open. Out there. Yes, it, uh, Bradley did mention it uh, during that, that panel. But I guess this is why it's just why it's so important. In light of what happened in this case, I don't know that it's a small part of the License that right, right. You have a question, Jim, and then. Okay, far away. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm 
the contract between a customer and and Red Hat, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I don't believe we have have, but it, but it's it's one of those. My understanding of that situation is if you distribute the the source code that Rel had given you, that you're going to lose your contract with Rel. And and that that or not rel with with red 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 hat you're you're still able to distribute the code, except red hat's not going to do business with you anymore. Good. I got no comment. I'd have to spend some time looking at it. I, I do know that that uh, Bradley has on the Conservancy's website a, a a detailed breakdown of the 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 situation that might be worth reading if you haven't already. Okay. Sure. Which agreement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I just I just look at the, the agreement separate from the, the GPL. I see what you're saying. I'd, I'd have to look closer at it. I'd have to look. Making a note. No, because I am familiar with the FAQ that you're talking about. It's just never taking the time to draw a comparison between that and the, the rail situation. Good. Do you have a question? No, no, that's fine. No, all right. Anyone else? It's Abby. Oh, no, that's okay. It's easy to find. Yeah, it's, oh. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, share that. Uh, yeah, go ahead and read it, and I can repeat it. Mm -hmm. There you go. So GNU.org slash licenses, plural, slash GPL dash FAQ dot HTML. And I think even if you put it in without the HTML, you'll still find it, but that'll definitely get it to you. Cool. Charles, way in the back. What do you mean, like a client connecting to a server? And what's the licensing of the various? Mm -hmm. 
Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because I think you can, you can run like a AGPL server and decide who can use it or not. Is that kind of what you mean? Or yeah, because just like, for example, if I'm running an AGPL program on a server for the public, I'm not obligated to let everybody use it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm fully understanding your. What's that? Oh, oh, the 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 client is HTPL, right? Oh, hmm. well, as long as they're providing the complete and corresponding source code for their both of those, that seems fine to me. But I don't, yeah, I don't think there's any requirement to. Yeah, I think they can still decide who get who connects to it. You remembered your question. Excellent. Or you got another one? No. Yes. Um, we find we come across them a couple of ways. One, we get reports. People send them in. And then also, uh, so every Friday from noon to 3 uh, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, we work on the free software directory. And so people add entries to that, and we go and examine the programs that have been submitted. And that's one way that we come across them. Um, yeah, so those are the two main ways. But the reporting is probably the, the quickest ways they come in. Yes, yeah, licensing at fsf.org. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of why we're repeating this is, is to kind of stem, um, because if it, the more it gets, the more it happens, the more it gets out of control, the more the GPL is, is watered, not, I was gonna say watered down, but it, it doesn't help it. So I would say that it hurts it. And that, that would affect free soft, the free software movement in general. Yes, sir. Um, I kind of saw this today, and they uh, said that there are programs that are licensed uh, GPL V2 and V3, so there's only a V2. Is that something that can be countered, or is that something that you don't want to do? Um, well, as, as the, so the GPL V2 and V3 are exclusively incompatible, not exclusively, but they're incompatible, so they can't be combined. Um, I don't see it too often. Um, it might come up where there's plugins involved. That's a pretty common thing. Uh, we're like the main. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they can say, oh, and that's where you would get into the, so there's the uh, or later version. So you can say GPL v2 or later, and that gives you permission to either or. Yeah, because I've never seen that. Anybody in the conference is going to be going to go back to the Right, right. No, no, I haven't seen like a, yeah, combination now. Sure, it's out there though. People trying. So. Cool. Well, I'll be around. I'll be here through Sunday. So if you have any questions or tell me I said something wrong, I'm fine with that too. Thanks everybody for, for your time.